Today is another day off. We all do the, and we all do the, welcome to Dr. C's biology class where teaching and learning is always a the, thank you so much. Students, I just wanna welcome you again to Dr. C's biology class. As most of you, or if not actually most of you, all of you should know by now that I'm always excited about education because I have that passion for education. That's why I've been in education for so long. All right, last week we started talking about cell, and yesterday we talked about cell. Today we're going to continue to talk about cell as well. But what, I'm, what this video is all about is just about a, rev uh, a review of what we already talked about. If you know what the answer is, please uh, you know, just say what the answer is. Uh, after this video is over with, it's only a 15 minute video, after this video is over with, you will be given a uh, reading strat strategy and you're going to be working individually at first. Then after that, you're going to be working as a group and then after that, we're going to work together as a team to see how many of you have the questions correct, all right? Okay, let's begin. Okay, first of all, we talk about sales. Uh, before you need to know about sales, you need to know what the definition is. We said that cell is the basic unit of life. Basically what that means is if you want to build any living thing, you know, no matter uh, where those living things are, if you want to build any living thing, you need to have a cell. That's why we said that cell is the basic unit of life. Basic unit of life simply means to build living things, you need to have a cell. The same thing like if I ask you to build a brick house. You want to build a brick house, you need bricks. All right, you want to build a glass house, you need glass. So if you want to build a living thing, you're definitely going to need a cell. And we also said there are two main groups of cell. Most of you should know what those two groups of cells are. What are those two groups of cells? Exactly right, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Those are the two main groups of cells. No matter where you go, every single cell in this world can be divided in, into, uh, in, into two main groups. All right, now they divide into two main groups. Everyone remember what their last names are. Those are two. They, <coughs> Excuse me, they actually like, <coughs> like brothers. They have different names, different first names, but both have the same last name. Do you know what their first names are? Did I hear you? If you say you, that's correct. If you say pro, that's correct. So those are the two, two uh, first names, you and then uh, pro. Their last names is carried. Okay, so if you want to call their full name, you can say eukaryote or you can say prokaryote. Okay, so they are brothers, they are different. Just like you, if you have your brother, if you have a sister, both of you are never alike, both of you are different. So it's the same thing with cells. Cells are, cells are also different. Prokaryotic is different from eukaryotic, obviously. That's why they have different names. But how are they different? Well, first of all, uh, Prokaryote is different from eukaryote because prokaryote does not have most of the stuff that eukaryote has. And that stuff that's found in eukaryote that most prokaryotic don't have are organelles. All right? As a matter of fact, the only organelle that they have in common is what? These are the organelles that DNA needs to make protein. What's that organelle called? That's correct, ribosome. All right. So beside the ribosome, there are a whole a lot of stuff. Okay, inside eukaryote. Again, like I said, this stuff is called organelle. The two main stuff that I want you to remember, that the state wants you to remember, are mitochondria and chloroplasts. Those are organelles that you will never, 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 never find in a prokaryotic pro prokaryotic cell. Okay. What's another structure though? How else are prokaryotic cells different from eukaryotic? Besides not having, you know, membrane-bound organelles, uh, mitochondria and chloroplasts. Well, another difference is if you look at the picture, if I show you a picture which I'm going to do uh, in a few minutes, show you a picture of prokaryotic, you will notice that both of them have that that is prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Both of them have DNA. However, in eukaryote, there is a membrane that is going around that DNA, okay? And that membrane we call a nucleus. So as, as, as long as you have a line going around the DNA, we don't call it just DNA anymore. Now we call it a nucleus. Why is that so? The reason why we call it a nucleus, because that DNA now is in a sort of a house, okay? So when you draw that line uh, around, is is a, a, a is is called a nucleus now. Okay, all right. So if you've been listening to me, there are two main differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Prokaryotic has, first of all, a lot of stuff. 
I mean, I'm, uh, not prokaryote, eukaryote, it has a lot of stuff, which we call membrane-bound organelle, and uh, prokaryotic does not. Also, eukaryotic has a true nucleus, and prokaryotic cells do not, okay? Now, we've talked about the uh, similarity, I mean, the differences between those two. How are they similar? How is the prokaryotic cell similar to eukaryotic cell? Well, the way they are similar is that both of them have three parts. Everyone in this class should know what those three parts are now. What are the three parts that are common to all, to all cells? Excellent. I think I heard you say ribosome, I heard you say DNA, and I heard you also say a cell membrane. So those are the three main parts that are actually common to all cells. But the question is why? I mean, you need to stop and ask yourself that question. How come all cells don't have mitochondria? How come all cells don't have chloroplasts? You know, why is it that all cells have a cell membrane? Okay, this is the reason why. For anything to get inside the cell or to leave the cell, they have to go through that membrane. That we call the cell membrane, all right? And that cell membrane is there actually to protect the cell. It is like the door to your house. You don't just let anyone come in and out of your house. So, so is this uh, cell membrane. The cell membrane selects what comes into the cell and what leaves the cell. In this way, it maintains what we call homeostasis, okay? Homeostasis means that everything that's inside must almost remain the same. Uh, a very good example of homeostasis for you, which we already talked about you know, way back, was that if you start running, I'm standing right now here and talking to you. Now, uh, I'm not sweating, but if I start jogging around, jogging around, running and running and running, what's going to happen to me? The inside of me is going to get hot. If the inside of me get hot, I need to find a way to cool it down because the inside of me must always remain at the same temperature. All right, so the way I can cool the inside is by sweating. So you can bring that temperature back to its normal temperature. It's the same thing with the cell membrane, okay? What the cell membrane does is it maintains the internal condition the same. So this way, things cannot just go in and out like they please. So it selects what goes in and out, all right? So to repeat, the main goal of the cell membrane is to select what enters and leave the cell to maintain homeostasis. That is why all cells must have a cell membrane. If they don't, that cell is not going to survive. You know, things can just come in and go like they want. You don't know when the bad things are coming, when the good things are coming. You don't know it's going to stay who's living. So everything gets, gets so chaotic, all right? So that's why they need to have the cell membrane. But let's go to the ribosome and DNA. Remember, we already clarified that all cells have DNA, all cells have ribosome. So what's the importance? You already should know. Why is it that all cells have ribosome and DNA? Excellent, all right? All cells must have ribosome and DNA. Why? Because they need to make protein. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. You cannot make living things without DNA. And guess what? The DNA goal is to make protein. The protein is made in the kitchen that we call the ribosome. That's where that protein is made. Okay, so for instance, if all the ribosomes were to disappear on Earth, guess what? We can't have living things because there's no place for the protein to be made. So in order for you to make protein, this will be the same thing like you want to build a brick. If you want to build a brick, you're going to need a cement in order to build a brick. So if you don't have a cement, guess what? You, you can have a brick. All right? So it's the same thing with DNA and ribosome. DNA makes protein in the ribosome. So if you don't have ribosome, you cannot have definitely can have living things. And obviously, if you don't have DNA, so that's obvious, no living things at all. So that's why every single cell must have DNA and every single cell must have ribosome. So this way they can make, so this way they can make, uh, they can make living things. All right, now let's look at the size, okay? Let's look at the size. Now, first of all, let's go back to eukaryote and let's go to prokaryote. Which one do you think is the smallest? And we'll talk about this. Exactly right. Prokaryotic is the smallest. Why? Well, they were the first cell to appear. For you to make anything big, you always have to start with something small. So if we say prokaryotic cells are the first cell to appear on Earth, therefore they have to be small. So the, the biggest cell are the eukaryotic cell. Okay, prokaryotic cells are smaller and eukaryotic cells are much more bigger. Okay? Now, let me ask you a question. 
If I were to give you three pictures of a cell right now, and I ask you to tell me which one is which, would you be able to tell? Okay, I can hear some of you say yes, and some of you just sitting passively, some of you maybe don't know. So I'm going to draw three cells on the board, and you tell me which one is which, okay? Okay, here we go. This is how one cell will look like. Okay, this is how one cell will look like. This is how the other cell will look like. And this is the third cell. Okay? I can tell you that one of this cell is an animal cell, and one of this cell is a blind cell. But I'm not finished yet. Some of you may already have the clue about which one is which, okay? But let me give you some more uh, clues in here and see if you can tell me which one is which. Okay, next I'm gonna put like a stack over here. This is stack. I'm gonna just put like two, one and two. And then I'm gonna put something like this that looks like the bottom of a shoe over here. Then I'm gonna put this over here and then I'm gonna circle it. I'm gonna put this over here, put this dot, put this dot, put this dot on that one. Well, I've got dots over here too, so these are dots, okay? I'm gonna put the same dot over here, all right? And then over here, I have the same, this same line that I have here is the same line over here, and that's the same one over here, but I'm gonna put a circle around it. And then this also has what looks like a shoe. Well, I think you have enough clue for right now. Okay, you have enough clue. Oh, you can see that. Let me get another colored pen. I don't think there's plain enough. Let me get another pen and just trace over this. All right, let me trace, let me trace. Okay, I think you probably can see it better now because it's a black, a black pencil that's going around. Okay, and has another one going around. All right, some of you are probably saying, I don't need to give you any more clue. You already know which one is which. All right, we're gonna find out together in a minute which one is which. So this one has a stack. This one has a stack. I think you can see it better now with these colors in there, right? Maybe I should have erased this. Instead of trying to draw over it, I don't think it's gonna be that clear if I do that. So let me erase this. I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. Now, let me draw that same structure I had before. So that's how that structure looks like. And that's how this structure looks like. And this has this with a line going around. And this structure has, I'm not, type of, I'm not sure what type of cell was that. Then I have a cell that looks like this. It has that structure that looks like this, but also it has those dots in there. Then I have this one looks like this. We also have that structure in it, the same structure. One, two, three, so this one has it too. So I'm gonna put a ring around it. And then this one is gonna have like the bottom of a shoe. All right, that's what's gonna have the bottom of a shoe. This one has this dot, 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 dot. This one has the same dot, and this one has the same dot. Okay, all right, now look at those pictures now. Now let us all try to label them. One of these is gonna be an animal cell. So let me write the word animal. Another one is gonna be a bacterial cell. Another one is gonna be a plant cell, okay? Okay, first of all, look at those names at the top. Which one is prokaryotic? Do we have one that's prokaryotic, two that's prokaryotic, all of them prokaryotic? Which one is prokaryotic? Okay, good. If it's a bacteria prokaryotic, you're all right. So prokaryotic is the only cell on this list that's prokaryotic. As a matter of fact, bacteria is the only prokaryotic you need to remember. Everything else is eukaryote. So plant is eukaryote, and animal is also eukaryote. Okay, now let's look at the shapes. Let's look at the... Uh, the drawing that you see on the board, which one do you think is prokaryotic? Okay, very good. If you say the middle one, then you're correct. So the middle one is prokaryotic. Now, can you tell me how you knew that was prokaryotic? Can you tell me how you knew? Okay, good, because it has a small size. Very good. 
That's what we said. We said prokaryotic is a whole lot smaller than the others. What would be another reason, though? Besides being small, what, what would be another reason? Say what? Great, excellent, because it does not have a lot of stuff in it. Good job. Look at this. It's almost like empty. All right? So, so this is prokaryotic cell because it does not have a lot of stuff in it, okay? So what else? You can't think of anything else? All right. If you did not say it, I think I heard someone say it, but I'm not really sure. But anyway, let me tell you, so this is where you get it. Remember that you're going to have a reading strategy in, in a few minutes. Basically, what I'm explaining here is for those students uh, that are visual learners, especially my ESL students, and uh, also think that this would benefit everyone else who's listening to me. But this is prokaryotic cell, number one, because it's small, and number two, it does not have a lot of stuff in it, like this, like this two uh, does over here. And number three, look at this. Everyone remember what these wiggly lines are? What are these wiggly lines? That's exactly right, that's a chromosome. But look, 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 look very carefully. Look, look, shh, quiet, quiet for a second. Look what's happening. You see, that's a wiggly line, that's a wiggly line. That's, now, what's the difference between this wiggly line and this wiggly line? This one has a ring going around it. And this one also has a ring going around But guess what? It, this one does not. Okay? And because this one does not have a line going around it, therefore, this one does not have true nucleus. So we say no true nucleus. Why no true nucleus? Because there is not a line going around it. There's not a ring going around it. If you don't have a ring going around it, you don't have a nucleus. Okay? So they don't have a nucleus. Okay? What else? Look very carefully. So the number one difference is uh, prokaryotic cells do not have a true nucleus, but look very carefully. What else? What? Yes. I think I heard someone say, yes, you're right. So no true nucleus, look, look. This is a membrane bound. This is a membrane bound. This is a membrane bound, OK? Uh, but I don't see it in here, all right? So this is a membrane bound is in this eukaryotic cell, and this membrane bound in this eukaryotic cell. But I don't see it here. So therefore, the number two difference, this is one, and this is number two. Prokaryotic, this is on this side, the middle side, does not have, does not have membrane bound organelle. Does not have membrane bound organelle. All right? Does not have membrane bound organelle. So those are the two main differences. Okay, we've already identified the prokaryotic. So which one of these is a plant cell and how do you know? Which one of these is a plant cell? I got too many people giving the answer. All right, I think so. I think I heard someone say, "This is the plant cell." If you say this is the plant cell, then you are correct. This is the plant cell. All right. So I'm going to write at the top, plant cell. Okay, that's the plant cell. Now, listen carefully. How did you know this was the plant cell? There are two important. Uh, facts from this diagram that makes it different from this diagram. Just look at the pictures. Look at the diagram. Look at the uh, uh, how the you know the things inside here and also inside here. Just look at it very carefully. How can you tell what the difference is? Correct. Look, I don't see this structure in here. All right. This structure is called chloroplast. What's it called? Very good. It's called the chloroplast. So in other words, plant cells have what you call the chloroplast. But look very carefully. Who has two lines going around? I see one, two lines. I don't see no two lines over here. This one only has one line going around. And because this one has two lines, this line at the outside actually protects this cell. All right? And anyone know what this is called? Yes, good job. That's called the cell wall. Exactly right. So one way you can tell the difference between a plant cell and an animal cell is plant cells have chloroplast and they have a cell wall, but animal cells do not. 
You got it? All right, just looking at the diagram. I reviewed this earlier. If you look at this diagram, there are three things that are common to all of them. Okay? First, all of them have dots, dot, and dot. So all of them have it. All of them also have, okay, you see that? All of them have this wiggly line, this wiggly line. And all of them also have a line going around. There's a line. See, this one has a line going around, that one has a line going around. Does anyone remember what those three structures are called? Very good. Great. So this one here is called a ribosome. So this is called a ribosome, and every single cell has it, and this line is called a cell membrane. Every single cell has it. And then the last one would be the, uh, this wiggly line, which is the DNA. All right, good job. I think everyone has done great, but now I want to uh, see how many of you actually been listening and taking good notes. I'm going to turn off the video. I'm going to give you a worksheet, and you have 10 minutes to read through the worksheet as individuals. Okay? You read it through as individuals, and later on, I'm going to body you. You know who your body is, and then after that, we're going to review this as a team. All right? Thanks for hearing. Now, get your notebooks out.